or you can probably pass on question on a sheet of paper and I will read it on your behalf. So the students who are very shy can just write your questions on a sheet of paper and I'll read it or members of the audience can just uh, grab the microphone and, and ask your questions or make queries. We have a very shy audience today. Japan Studies, CIS, C30 students are supposed to be very aggressive. Questions and queries. Maybe, maybe uh, Dr. Jean Franco can begin. <laughs> the Department of Political Science. Um, congratulations, Mr. Pan. I was in awe at the stories you told us about your uh, movement in Cambodia. And my question is in relation to um, Dr. Lau's uh, comment in your uh, discussion. Uh, I wonder as to what extent uh, have women's groups or civil society movements in Cambodia participated in your grassroots campaign for free elections? And I wonder as to what extent they're uh, using the time um, in between elections in laying the groundwork for uh, women-friendly laws. Um, I mean, this is, I think, the Philippine case uh, is a good model since uh, we all know that women's groups in the Philippines participated very actively in our democratization uh, and that they were able also to translate this participation into the passage of uh, a lot of women-friendly laws in, that we have today in the Philippines. you have some comments, uh, more comments Mr. Panya or perhaps some of the things that you would like to emphasize which you were unable to, to crunch in after uh, we didn't have enough time. Maybe you can just add a few more comments. The Men. 
we should suggest the men also in the party list at least 30 percent. So we we use both sex male and female, but still in the process uh, advocate and lobby get the the major political party. And to try to focus, we try to build capacity of the female uh, political activists. Because the political party, they always uh, suggest that please uh, send them the, the female politi politician who have capacity to conduct campaign and have the leadership. So that's why we, we uh, conduct the training and to build the leadership for the women and to provide the skill on how to conduct the political campaign that can be attractive to the to the political party leader so so far in this uh, four national assembly election and two coming council elections we found out there are there quite good results of, in terms of increase the number of the women participants in the politics and got elected as a women elected official. For example, the common council before we don't have this uh, almost no women uh, local authority in the position, but now it increased. 12% of the women councillor, community councillor. And the National Assembly uh, increased around 20% 20, 20 of the National Assembly member uh, women. So, however, now we continue to, to work on that because it's still risk of uh, of uh, Increased number of women, women because the, the leader of political party, when we met, they said that they sacrificed to give that position to women because the Cambodian voter not really, not really like the party list that have more women in the list. They have a problem. But according to our survey, the voter not discriminated. But the political party leader, they still still all type. They still that's why they use intuition to make decision that to put the women in the in the party in the party list is something that is sacrificed because they are they want to show themselves they they along with uh, civil society advocate and suggestion because we have influence people on the ground. So they are in the process of uh, uh, dialogue and discussion with the uh, political party leader. Okay, there are two questions here we give to me. First question is, were you ever arrested for your work in Comfrat? I repeat, were you ever arrested for your work in Comfrat? That's the first question. And the second question is, how strong is the role of the military in elections in Cambodia? I repeat, how strong is the role of the military in elections in Cambodia? So, were you ever arrested for your work in Comfra? That's the first question. And second, how strong is the role of the military in elections in Cambodia? I never been arrested, or my colleague never been arrested. But we got some harassment intimidation uh, but however we never any physical uh, violence against us one time I remember in, uh, in 2007 when the, our Prime Minister he uh, publicly talked in the public he want to retire if he lost the election, but he in the position of Prime Minister is long time, I think almost 30 years. 
but the media, the journalist asked me to comment what is uh, make this public statement. I say that for the value of the leadership, sometimes not necessary to wait until lost population. If you feel that you have done good for Cambodia, or you feel tired, or you feel tired, you just resign from the prime minister, just like that. Because many countries, they just uh, try to practice like that, like Japan, or in Southeast Asia, like, um, like uh, Malaysia, Mahathir Muhammad. He got so angry with me, and he made uh, publicly through his all TV channel, and uh, he, he accused me that I'm the one not, not uh, follow the free and fair election, not, not, not like democracy, because asked him to resign, you know, kind of, he believed, he, he said that if he lost election, why I, I not believe in election, should believe in election. Uh, he, he, he resigned because he lost election. So he said that I have to go to where I stay, I live, come back not to live in Cambodia. So this make, make my family, my friends so afraid, fear. And because he's very powerful, he's very powerful. So in 2010 again, he still remember that he made, again, publicly uh, speak and spell my name one by one. This guy, he asked me to retire. He and very, very, uh, I think he's got very, very strong. And many people told me that I should be very, very careful because uh, many people is not uh, is afraid to, to to touch him. But I say that just is my my comment, your decision, you want to retire after you left a long selection or you want to retire, you just retire, that's your decision, this is my comment, I still keep saying that, but some people, if they respond like that, keep quiet, not to come. The military in Cambodia still control, under control of the ruling party. Uh, the Prime Minister, he has a lot of bodyguards, thousand, thousand bodyguards. That, that the bodyguard very uh, sophisticated equipment. Um, so this also threat to the to the to the fair election because the ruling the ruling the, the military is still very in favor involved in the campaign for the ruling party. And the high rank military is a member of the steering committee of the ruling party. So very, very rich. And uh, in terms of uh, threat to the, to the conflict, in case that the non-ruling party, non-ruling party uh, would get uh, the vote majority and Cambodian cabinet have not been tested transform transfer of power smoothly yet since the 1993 so the current ruling party still control the what uh, call power so we are still fragile democracy that's right I, uh,
either of the, the speakers really. I was very interested in the comments that Asian um, election monitors see things differently from non-Asian election monitors as a non-Asian election monitors for um, last year's elections here in the Philippines in 2010. I was part of the People's International Observers Mission, which was a group of maybe about 100 foreigners, but we were also equal in number, I think, with Filipinos. Um, and my experience of that definitely goes along with what you said, that the perceptions from the Westerners were, were different maybe from uh, people who were working on the ground to the point of when that was reported back, we had two completely different versions of events. And I just wondered if you would like to expand on your comment or your maybe if things are the same in um, Cambodia, or how you, how you see that as being important. So I think maybe we should we should in depth study 
to our culture, to elaborate on the core value of democracy and human rights. Yes. It's my, it's my Okay, we'd also like to acknowledge the presence of the former chairperson of the Department of Political Science and former director of the Third World Studies Center, the Honorable Tessa Kardashian Thalden. Yes, Melissa has to say something. starting in Comfrel. My question is, um, was there such times that you, you 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 thought that you want to quit or have doubts to fight for free and fair elections in Cambodia? And when that time came, what what pushed you what pushed you to, to continue the fight for free and fair elections in Cambodia? That's it. I know that. 